we all know, the United States is a technological power that possesses, manufactures, and exports the most nuclear and chemical weapons. Therefore, no country is willing or dare not to anger and violate it, the United States. Many countries are unwilling to protest, counterattack, criticize, or express dissatisfaction even if they are oppressed, coercion, threatened, unreasonable, accusing, and barbaric by the American ruler, and would rather be succumbed to the authority of the American ruler, nuclear weapon, and dared not make a sound of it. This has caused American rulers to become more and more arrogant and lawless, and thus, involved in interference in the security and policies of other countries. At the same time, it has also instilled the world's most erroneous concept that as long as possessing powerful, sharp, and advanced nuclear weapons is the most basic condition for victory, prosperity, and negotiation. As a result, many countries continue to purchase military weapons and nuclear weapons from the United States. Invisibly, it is tantamount to giving the United States support, encouragement, assistance, and power to abuse and manufacture more nuclear weapons, lethal weapons. This not only helped the rapid growth and expansion of the U.S. economy and power, but also turned the United States into a global boss. At the same time, many ignorant people continue to actively learn from the United States and worship Americans. They, the unwise, learned American culture, customs, and American life. This is the so-called American style, which is selfish, arrogant, shameless, rude, barbaric, pornographic, licentious, discrimination, fraud, recklessness, greed, cruelty, willfulness, retaliation, and etc. stupidity actions. These stupid human beings not only plunge themselves into a painful and degenerate life, but also caused many social problems. For example, retaliation, abuse, rape, robbery, suicide, murder, violence, fraud and other cases have continuously occurred and recurred, resulting in unrest and chaos in the entire society. Therefore, human beings cannot live and work in peace, nor can they live in harmony. Since the September 11, 2001 incident, the status of the title boss of the United States has begun to be shaken. At the same time, current affairs in the United States have also attracted the attention of countries all over the world. People, countries, try to understand and learn the methods of the American ruler and how they, the American ruler, overcome the crisis they are facing. At that time, American residents, business owners, and politicians were very worried about their own security, reputation, status, and their wealth. Therefore, many American entrepreneurs are planning to terminate or close their business, in the United States, separately, actively transfer their private industries to Southeast Asian countries, developing countries or more stable countries, and continue to carry out certain acquisitions, profiteering and private interests. At this time, scandals of large entrepreneurs' bankruptcies and fraud continued to spread in the United States. For example, the collapse of Enron, the U.S. energy giant, the fraudulent accounting scandal of WorldCom, the second-largest long-distance telephone company in the U.S., the high-tech industry network associates, Quest, Xerox, Merrill Lynch in the financial industry, Credit Suisse First Boston and accounting companies. Financial fraud cases involving Arthur Anderson, Ernst & Young, KPMG, PricewaterhouseCoopers etc. All these sudden changes made the United States worse and worse again, and suffered a blow again. The stock market continues to plummet, entrepreneurs continue to close down and continue to flee. The unemployment rate of the people has also continued to rise, which has also caused many residents and business people to face the tragedy of bankruptcy or fall into poverty overnight. The US economy suddenly fell into slack and economic deficit. All this has strengthened the retaliatory ambition, pressure, depression, and fear of American politicians. Only then did U.S. President George W. Bush and his rulers realize that their status, reputation, authority, and their international power, title boss, 
have begun to be threatened. They, the rulers of the United States, can no longer be as prestigious, get whatever they want, and domineering, irrational, arrogant, bullying, etc. They can no longer apply pressure, threats, accusations, arrogance, dictatorship, unreasonableness, interference, and levy high taxes on countries, civilians and business people around the world. Because now, they have lost their authority and majesty and the United States is facing the trend of extinction. Because American politicians are very aware of the post-911 trends in the United States, have entered poverty. Therefore, in order to ensure self-interest, in order to embezzle a large amount of public funds to create a way for oneself, in order to retaliate, in order to restore his, the ruler of the United States, personal reputation, status, authority, interests, and future money, it can only be obtained by launching a war or use large sums of public funds. This is because the Bush administration believes that launching a war based on the situation at the time is the easiest, most reasonable, and most effective persuasive and solution. At the same time, it is also the least easy for people to know or discover their selfishness and their motives. On the other hand, the Bush administration has also implemented measures such as wage cuts, tax cuts, interest rate cuts, and relaxation of entrepreneurial regulations to conceal its motives and distract the attention, suspicion, and concealment of true inside information from countries, businesses, and ordinary people around the world. The US is facing an extinction trend, and in order to retain the confidence and support of business owners and the people, because American residents know themselves, evil and irrational bad guys, their government's capabilities, losers, and styles, selfishness, violence, pressure, lying, and juggling, etc., and the country's situation very well, so the capable and wealthy businessmen have long since escaped. So far, the United States is left with only the incompetent, the old and the children, how can it fight the world? The Bush administration in the United States also understands this truth. In order to achieve its, Bush administration, purpose, in order to inspire the fighting spirit, support, confidence, and overcoming the fear of war among the soldiers and the people. As a result, the U.S. Bush administration planned and deployed a scam, referring to Iraq's possession of weapons of mass destruction, to lobby Britain, the United Nations, Southeast Asian countries, France, Germany, Europe and other countries. So that the alliance can join the war and send troops to attack and occupy Iraq. However, the fraudulent lobbying of the Bush administration only won the approval and support of the Tony Blair government in the United Kingdom. This is because the leaders and people of the other countries love peace very much, and they understand the behavior of the Bush administration and question its purpose, the ruler of the United States, so they did not support or participate in this war. Why does the British government believe in the scam lobby of US President George W. Bush? The reason is very simple. This is because British Prime Minister Tony Blair and his, British, rulers are too greedy for the benefits, promises, and conditions granted by the Bush administration. On the other hand, the British Tony Blair government was also too arrogant, complacent about its own strength, sane, and self-centered, too underestimated the enemy, too underestimated, and ignored the traps laid out by the enemy, the ruler of the United States. The so-called, a wise man has a thousand apprehensions, there must be a loss, a fool who has a thousand apprehensions, there must be a gain. This is the principle. It can be seen from this that because of his excessive greed, British Tony Blair stepped into the enemy's trap unconsciously, because he was too greedy, he could not distinguish the truth from the false, and because he was too greedy, he was used by the enemy. This has also proved that George W. Bush is a clever liar and Tony Blair is indeed a fool, because the lies of the enemy are believed to be true. The so-called, sky's net meshes is sparse but not leaking. Sky's net is very vast and although the mesh is sparse, there will be no emissions. People who do a lot of evil will definitely be punished. 
That's the principles. No matter how clever the means, there is no way to escape the truth, no matter how cunning, there is no way to escape crime. Today, George W. Bush and Tony Blair's lies are constantly exposed and made public. At the same time, George W. Bush and Tony Blair were also under pressure from domestic and foreign circles, the United Nations, radio and television, the Democratic Party, the People, the Republican Party, the press, and the White House to criticize, attack, and question in order to force the so-called proof that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction evidence, etc. George W. Bush and Tony Blair were restless at night because of this, they went abroad non-stop to search, condolences and interfere with the safety of other countries, so as to find more time and reasons for themselves to cover up their stupid behavior and mistakes in order to distract people's attention, confused people's suspicions and judgments, and people gradually forgot about this matter, etc. But George W. Bush and Tony Blair still couldn't understand their stupid behavior. They just made a point and wasted their efforts. The so-called, moths extinguish the fire and kill themselves. Not only were they, George W. Bush and Tony Blair, unable to dispel people's attention and calm people's anger, but they, self-defeating, backfire, and strengthen people's dislike, dissatisfaction, attention, curiosity, doubts, and weaknesses towards them. In the end, it will become more clearer and discernible. In fact, in this U.S.-Iraq war, the U.S.-British coalition forces have completely failed. In this war, the United States and Britain not only failed to achieve the pre-planned conspiracy, occupying and seizing the oil of other countries, and insisted goals, on the contrary, boomerang damaged their reputation and status. And so far, the continuous attacks, deaths and rejection of the Iraqi people by the U.S. military in Iraq are also the best proof. Furthermore, the United States underestimates the fact that all countries in the world are full of terrorists, terrorism, view allies as hostile, view allies as terrorists, and anti-American elements, which are constantly exerting pressure on Southeast Asian countries, the United Nations, and other parts of the world. Threats, rejection, violence, interference, etc. In this way, how can there be friends? The so-called, the limit reached, things reverse themselves, is the principle. Postscript, if the United States can still launch wars on countries around the world, why has the United States so far been unable to shoulder, be responsible for, and complete the current reconstruction of Iraq alone? and beg for the assistance of countries around the world and participate in this reconstruction work. Moreover, we have indeed seen the real America and the U.S. aggression against Iraq. This is because this country is not democratic. How can democracy forced through aggressive actions be democratic? Joy and anger. The way of joy and anger is not to be pleased with things that are not worthy of joy and not to be angry with things that are not worthy of anger. The boundary between joy and anger must be drawn clearly. Innocent people are not affected when angry, and guilty people are not spared when happy. The two emotions of joy and anger cannot be without a reason. If you act arbitrarily based on your own emotions, you will destroy your career. A general cannot start a war because of his own anger. If one engages with the enemy because of one's private anger, it will surely lead to failure. Therefore, political and diplomatic strategies must be the first, and armed confrontation must be the second. If force is the first priority, even if you win at first, you will eventually lose. But the person who gets angry first will regret it later because venting momentary anger will lead to his own destruction.